All right, so we're gonna start off. We're gonna start off with uh, my water, which is went through a filter. And this water happens to be 0 0.0, 0, 0. .0. This here is the city of Cleveland water that came from the tap. 100. 25 parts per million. Probably what we're looking at here is a combination of fluoride, chloride, and, and other particulate that's in the water that's not filtered by the city. And McDonald's tap water is actually city water, and their tap water happens to be about 103 parts per million, 103 parts per million. And I'm assuming that they filter the city water. Taco Bell is 76 parts per million. 74 parts per million for Burger King water. 74 parts per million for Burger King water. Smart water is 25 parts per million. 52 parts per million, okay, of particles. So it's 52 parts per million particles in the Pure Life bottled water. 26 parts per million. Okay, so there are some particulate in the McDonald's water. I figure 85 parts per million. So Deer Park is 85 parts per million. Okay. Now, we decided to go get some distilled water. Now when they say distilled water, it has to be distilled. And we are zeroed in, we are on zero, and it's rather low. It's almost as low as my water. It's 0.1, one part per million. So now we know that distilled water, when they distill water, they take everything out of it, almost, except for the one part per million may actually be some of this plastic. You know, plastic bottles do release some plastic into the water that we're drinking. This is uh, distill up, and this is called artesian spring water, and this one here, we also tested, and this one is, wow. This one here is 220 parts per million. 220 parts per million. And, you know, what would be in that water if it's spring water? Well, we're gonna assume that the water probably has minerals in it, and it doesn't say, it just says source of distilla, artesian spring water, they're, they're not required to tell you what's in it, so you have no clue what that 220 parts per million is, other than you're gonna take for granted that it's spring water and it's good for you. Okay, so we basically tested all our water. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at my water, which is filtered water. Then we're looking at city water, which probably has all types of chemicals in it, such as um, fluoride, chloride, and another thing that's in water today is that a lot of our drug companies, when our drugs uh, expire, they either burn it or they flush it, and they're all flushing it. So this ends up going into our lake water, and then it gets back into our drinking water, and I don't believe they have any way of removing any of those drugs, so it's almost medicated water. And then, of course, our fast foods probably use city water, and they run it through a filter. We, we now see that our, our, our plastic bottles do have particulate in it. They're supposed to be clean, free water. There could be plastic in them. There could be fluoride in them. We don't know. And then, of course, our best bet here is distilled water with nothing. Now, now here's what I like to do. Um, this is my, uh, I'm going to get this glass, which is clean, and later I'll show you my system. But I'm going to take a glass of my, we'll call it, we'll call it, we're going to call this Marco water, all right? And basically, 0.0, .0 on the gauge. And so this test is coming out to be 0, 0. You can hear the tap. This is our city water, which you know is 126, okay? Smart water into this cup. So here's our smart water. And we know that that's 25 per million. So we're, what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna take Marco water, another Marco water, okay? We're gonna take another glass of Marco water, and we'll just check that to make sure 
that it's also 0.0, .0 and it is 0, .0. Okay. And What we're going to do this water is we're going to take the city water, we're going to take everything out of it, make it nothing in it, 0, 0.0, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add trace minerals. Now, this is probably a $40 bottle. It lasts a really long time. And we know what's in there. There are trace minerals that your body needs. So what we're going to do now is we're going to introduce particulate into our water. Let's just put one little drop. We don't need a lot. Okay, one drop is all we're going to put in today. But these are trace minerals. And in the comment section, I'll tell you what they are. So now we're going to test our water again. Okay. And now we bumped up our particulate in our water to 140. But we know 140 parts per million, we know what we put in. We put in trace minerals, which our body needs. Do we drink smart water out of a plastic container? We have no clue what these 25 parts are. It could be fluoride. Or we could use city water at 125 parts per million of all kind of bad stuff. One of which is fluoride. If you do some fluoride math, look at your toothpaste. It'll state if more than used for brushing, size of a pea is actually swallowed, get medical help or contact Poison Control Center right away. Well, if you calculate a pea size, it's roughly 0.3 milligrams of fluoride. And a large strip of toothpaste, which is generally what we use, is 2.25 milligrams of fluoride. Well, if you look at one liter of fluorinated water that you would get from the city, it's equal to one milligram of fluoride. So, according to the EPA and the toothpaste industry, if you drink two liters of fluorinated city water, you need to go to the emergency room right away. Water. Would you want to drink that? Maybe. Probably not. You want to drink this water 0, 0.0? Probably. Do you want to drink this water 0.1? Yeah, probably. I'm going to drink this water. 144 parts per million of trace minerals, which I know what's in my water. Okay, now we're going to do the pH test. Only 11 countries out of 196 total countries in the world have more than 50% of their people drinking fluorinated water. This only represents 5% of the entire world's population drinking fluorinated water in the United States than in the rest of the world combined. There's no difference in tooth decay between Western nations that fluorinate their water and those that do not. FDA requires a poison warning on every tube of fluoride toothpaste now sold in the U.S. Risks from ingesting fluoride toothpaste include permanent tooth discoloration, stomach ailments, acute toxicity, skin rashes, and impairment in the glucose metabolism. Additionally, According to a Harvard researcher, children living in high fluorinated areas have significantly lower IQs than those in low fluorinated areas. Okay, so now we're going to add in a little bit into this mix here. And uh, what I notice is that water generally could be between 6.5 and 8.5 is, is the range. Anything under seven is considered acidic. Uh, above seven is alkaline. Um, a lot of your uh, uh, viruses and cancers all like acidic bodies. And so I'm going to think acidic isn't where you want to be. So I'm thinking that you want to be alkaline. And pretty much these aren't that bad. I kind of like the, the city water is actually pretty good for the pH. But unfortunately, it's not that good for the parts per million, especially since we know that there's excessively amounts of fluoride in the city water. So these have a lot of fluoride in them. The plastic container drinks, we really don't know what's in them. They don't really tell us what's in them, and there's probably some plastic in there, and that can't be very good. We know that distilled water is pretty well low in particulate, okay? but it's not as alkaline as you'd want it to be. So by taking the water that I filter, and it's, mine's actually between a six and a 6.8, and then we add trace minerals to it, we actually bring up the pH to a great range. So not only now we have particulate that we know, we have the proper pH, which is 
alkaline. You want to be a little bit alkaline. And so I'd have to say out of all these waters, the ones I'm going to drink are probably going to be my water with the trace minerals. In conclusion, what we do is we take the city water, which is high in particulate and has fluoride in it. We then run it through two pre-filters, one with a one micron polypropylene medium and a carbon filter. We then take it through a DI or deionized tank. Then we achieve a lower pH of around 6.5 with 0.0 parts per million of contaminants. We then add trace minerals to it, which our body needs and increase the parts per million, increase the pH to about a 7.8, and that is our drinking water and vegetable washing water.